What is this section going to be about then? Well, it's what women want, of course. Uh, you've probably heard the story about peacocks and why they ha males have these massive tails. And they do it because the females like the males with the sexiest tails, and so the males with the sexiest tails go on and have more. You know all that. But there's a much more interesting question here. And that's why are the females doing the choosing in the first place? So uh, for this, I'm going to need a man, story of my life. Uh, so you, sir, <laughs> you look terrified. Uh, what's your, no, you can, stay, you can stay there, don't worry. It's not that bad. What's your name? David. David, nice to meet you, David. And a nice strong handshake. Uh, would you say that you're an honest kind of person? Yeah, fairly honest. Fairly honest. I'm sorry to break this to you, David, but you are a cheat. Um, and in fact, all males amongst the audience here we could argue that you are all cheats. Because if you think about it, you need one egg and one sperm to make an offspring. So female, to make an offspring, needs to make a massive egg. Male's tiny sperm. Someone's getting the better deal here. And in fact, there's such a difference in how much males and females invest. Because if you think, especially in terms of mammals, like humans, you've got not only the egg, but the whole fetusy thing and placenta and lactate. You can tell I'm not thinking of having kids anytime soon. <laughs> and you've got so much that the female invests that females simply can't afford to make as many uh, offspring as males can. And we can see this in humans in the Guinness World Records. So let me introduce you to Mrs. Vassal Yeva. Uh, what a lovely photo we have. Uh, no, Mrs. Vasilyeva was the wife of a Russian peasant in the 1600s, hence why we don't have a picture of her. And she holds the record for the most number of children born to any human female. 69 children. 69, all the women in the audience are wincing. She had this through 27 different births, so a mixture of triplets and twins. But 69 children. All the people outside are probably wondering why I'm yelling 69 in the middle of a sex talk. But 69. In contrast, though, we have men. So we've got Ishmael ibn Sharif, the Sultan of Morocco. Now, this record is a little bit more disputed because, of course, there wasn't Jeremy Kyle in those days. <laughs> But he holds the record for no number of offspring born to a single human male. 860! 69, 860. Who's that clapping at the back? <laughs> good on him, is that what you're saying? Well, if you think good on him, Genghis Khan, famous for having so many kids, he is still affecting the genetics of the Mongol region to this day. The men in the Mongol area now have um, a more similar Y chromosome because of this shared parentage. It's ridiculous. So we've got this massive difference in uh, the numbers of males and the numbers of uh, offspring that males can produce, the number of offspring that females can produce. And so you've got all these males fighting over these females. And if you've got loads of males fighting over you, you can afford to be picky. So what is it that women want? Well, women want this. Let's just take a moment, shall we? <sighs> I mean, who wouldn't want that? It's, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's, it's beautiful. Of course, women want good genes. Hey, thank you very much. Um, and so women want to find males with good genes. Uh, but as we found out from David here, um, most men are cheats. Or in fact, to take this a bit further, if it's possible to cheat in evolutionary terms, you should. If you can get away with cheating, then you might as well. And so these females need a way of working out uh, which males have got good genes that can't be cheated by the males. So they go from Armani to Argyle. No, I don't think anyone can find this attractive. Uh, no, they don't like uh, miraculously coloured golfing trousers. They do instead, if you like the last one, you'll love this, like handicaps. Not so much of a reaction. Um, <laughs> so the females need a way of working out good genes, and they use handicaps. Oh, dearie me. Sounds like there's a fire alarm going on. If you can carry on through this, then underlying you, there must be something good for now. 
Um, and so, right, where was I? So yes, so this means that if you can survive with a massive handicap, like the peacock tail, then it shows that you must have good genes. But we've got to find out from David that this can't be cheated. And so if we take a bad male who pretends that he's got good genes, well, he's going to die because basically he can't afford to have this massive handicap. So that's a pretty good way of getting rid of cheats, I find, if they die, if they cheat.